All right, Alexander, we have a type of UFO incident or balloon incident um, taking place. Not only in the United States, actually, balloons are kind of all over the place, it seems. But uh, even in China, according to the Global Times, they shot down some sort of object. Um, I, I don't know what it was, but it's an object. And uh, just yesterday, an, an octagon object was shot down over Lake... Uh, like Huron in uh, the United States. So I think in like 10 days, there's been, what is it, four, three, four, five uh, UFOs that have been uh, spotted and shot down uh, in and around the U.S. and, and Canada. And uh, there, are, there are even some U.S. military commanders who are saying they've not ruled out uh, aliens, alien aircraft. <laughs> Oddly enough, this is true. Uh, if this is alien aircraft, then these aliens are pretty pretty pathetic because they're getting shot down pretty easily. So I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of advanced technology they have, but it's not working out too well. Well, I mean, um, I, I've been, I, yes. I, I've been, I've, I've been reading some absolutely bizarre things, which I have to say, I mean, I, I presume that they're people just cracking jokes now about how these mysterious objects are able to jam, you know, F twenty twos, things of that kind. I mean, this. This whole thing is descending into utter and total farce. I mean, that's the thing to say. I mean, you know, we, we, we started with a balloon, a Chinese balloon floating across the United States. Now, you know, I, I said at the time, I don't know whether this is a surveillance balloon or just a weather balloon that's gone off, <laughs> of, you know, of, uh, you know, being swept along by the winds. I thought on balance it was probably a surveillance balloon. I still think that... Um, Overall, but you know who knows. I did think that the Chinese were probably trolling the U.S. a little. We discussed this in our video. If that is what the Chinese were up to, then they have succeeded beyond all expectations, because we now have this preposterous situation of the United States sending advanced fighter jets up, up into the sky all over the place, shooting down. They don't even know what they're shooting down. <laughs> they don't know what octagon objects are. They might be aliens. They might be Chinese. They might be our, their own weather balloons. They might not be balloons at all. They might be some new sophisticated drone because, you know, they haven't been able to work out how these things are operating. I mean, the whole thing is just is just completely absurd. And I'm going to say what I actually think about this. I think this is an example of uh, what, what is actually deep down going on, is that you have a White House, the White House itself, the people there, very, very angry about events in general, giving all sorts of orders to the Pentagon, to, you know, we hear that there's a balloon here or a balloon there or something or other here. You must shoot it down. And the Pentagon is obliging because it's required to carry out orders. The Pentagon itself is very angry about some of these orders because they're beginning to become um, idiotic. And so the Pentagon itself is countering by uh, spreading some of these nonsensical stories. So the result is that we're starting to get what I suspect is something of a briefing war. But again, it demonstrates something that we've been talking about in other programs, the tensions within the United States at the top level between the White House and the military are increasing. The Pentagon is obviously not happy about the Ukraine uh, war, the direction of the Ukraine war. We've talked about that at length. And the White House is angry with the Pentagon and we're having all of these weird decisions and the Pentagon is now say, OK, you want us to shoot things down, we'll shoot them down. But we'll go around saying, well, you know, they might be octagons or, or, or uh, uh, you know, aliens or whatever. And at the same time, the Chinese can't resist it. They're saying, you know, we've got all these American balloons flying over our country, too. So I think this is what this is all about. I think this is really um, the bureaucracies in uh, the Pentagon and to some extent even in China working to make the White House look ridiculous, which, to be frank, they're achieving. Yeah, but the White House is spinning some of these events, or they've tried to spin some of these events as uh, Biden's decisiveness 
Yes. You know, like the one that he shot down a couple of days ago. They spun it as yes. Biden gave the order and it was yes. shot down 24 hours later. Yes. So, I mean, yes. you know, the, the, the PR of it is, is trying to be spun to present Biden as, as the defender of U.S. airspace. And not just the defender of U.S. airspace. That's he's, to be defend, he's defender of the Earth from the alien intruders, who are also apparently, or possibly, or conceivably, or it might be the case, coming in mysterious octagon-type objects and being shot down over Lake Huron. I mean, you know, it, it, yes, I agree. That is the spin. But, I mean, just look at how absurd this story has become. Uh, nobody, no president really comes off well when they're being presented as a, being as absurd as this. Obviously, he has the huge advantage that he always does, that he's got the media 99% behind him. So, I mean, if it was Donald Trump sending up the, sh the military to shoot down balloons and octagons and all these kinds of things, you can imagine what the media would be doing with this. But... They're protecting Biden, as they always do. But overall, nonetheless, to those people who matter, he's not coming across as decisive and strong-willed and, uh, you know, level-headed. He's coming along out as, frankly, looking more and more ridiculous. What about all of this as some sort of a distraction, either a distraction from uh, the Nord Stream sabotage story, or perhaps a distraction for the, the impending uh, collapse of Project Ukraine, or maybe they're trying to, to distract from something else that's being planned or, or plotted. It is indeed a distraction. That's exactly what it is. I mean, that is exactly how it started. I mean, you know, the, the whole idea I'm pretty sure this is true all along, by the way, including about the Chinese balloon, is to make Biden look like the strong, purposeful president, making the decisive decisions, shooting down surveillance balloons. And, you know, this might have been a surveillance balloon. Uh, and it might even have been a legitimate order when he gave it. I'm not saying it wasn't, but, you know, but that's partly the plan. That was definitely, I think, the intention. The point is, somebody's taken that intention and that plan and turned it and made it look absurd. So, yes, I think it is partly intended to, you know, take our attention away from the Nord Stream affair and from, you know, the impending failure of Project Ukraine and perhaps growing problems in the US economy and other things. But... It's a distraction that has worked by making the president look absurd. <laughs> that's, that's how it seems to me. Yeah, well, the, the U.S. Is, is focused, the White House, the Biden White House has become focused with this balloon UFO thing. And uh, other countries are going about their business. Yeah. I mean, it's, the that, that's the absurdity of it is, yeah, you know, like, for example... Um, you know, Lavrov was in Sudan, and he uh, yeah. he got a deal, a big deal, with uh, yeah. to to, uh, to have a port in uh, in Sudan, and in exchange for access to the port, the Russians are going to uh, to give weapons, a big weapons Absolutely. deal to uh, yeah. to the Sudanese government. So this was a big deal. Uh, North Korea, no one, no one's paying attention to North Korea. You were talking uh, about this before we uh, were recording this video that uh, North Korea had their big big military parade and the U.S. is, is occupied with, with balloons. Okay, we mentioned the Nord Stream, we mentioned uh, what's going on in Ukraine, all that, but there's other stuff that's going on and you know, all the correct. attention is on, on balloons and UFOs. Yeah, absolutely correct. And I, and I mean, you know, it, it does show how out of touch the ruling group in Washington has become, how disconnected from the world, you know, the real events in the world. I mean, they've overinvested catastrophically in Ukraine. It's not turning out for them. They're having major news management issues. They've tried to build up this image of Biden as the heroic war leader um, over the balloons. And in the meantime, things are going on around the world, which are becoming increasingly 
well, shall we say, moving very much against the US's interest. Now, this business with Lavrov signing off this deal with Sudan is a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. As you write, it's a naval base, a Russian naval base on the Red Sea. Um, apparently, nuclear uh, uh, powered warships will be able to use it, even if it's not going to be a huge naval base. Sudan's military is going to be re equipped with Russian weapons. It looks as if Sudan, which has tilted backwards and forwards between the US and the Eurasian states, is now tilting firmly towards the Eurasians. The US tried to stop the deal when there was a change of government, when there was a coup in Sudan. They tried to stop the deal. Now it's on. The Sudanese have jumped into the Eurasian camp. That's what it means. And the Russians have a big naval base, a, a, a big naval base coming on the Red Sea and another important presence in eastern Africa coming on top of Russian inroads in, in Ethiopia and Eritrea. Chinese are very big in these areas as well. And of course, the Chinese have a major naval base in Djibouti. So, you know, big geopolitical events there. And North Korea, I would say, from an American perspective, is more worrying still because there was this big military parade um, three days ago in Pyongyang. And there's this endless procession of intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear powered weapons that North Korea is developing. And North Korea claims, and it's probably talking correctly, that it's now in the process of building nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines. So North Korea is evolving into a kind of pocket superpower. I mean, you know, it's a small country, but it's becoming a small country, not just with nuclear bombs, but a small country with intercontinental ballistic missiles, with nuclear submarines, with increasingly advanced tanks and machines and all these kind of things. It's developing now economic links with Russia. Um, it's This is a story that's not fully understood and developed, but after the sanctions on Russia, the Russians have lost any real incentive to enforce rigorously the sanctions on North Korea. And, you know, one's hearing reports that the Russians are now quietly sending oil this may not be true, I mean, you know, but there are these reports now that, you know, the Russians are quietly starting to get more involved with North Korea, that the two countries are moving closer together. And all of this at the same time, as I said, as new North Korea is developing this major military arsenal and is in a position to counter the United States itself with strikes on the US mainland, which I would have thought would be a serious matter for the United States, but it's also causing alarm in South Korea. And there's been reports that the South Koreans are now saying that if things continue in the way that they are, they might feel obliged to develop a nuclear capability of their own, which is something that the United States, for all kinds of reasons, doesn't want to see. And what is the Biden White House doing about all of this? They're doing nothing. I mean, they're not, they're not focused on that. Well, they're not thinking about Ukraine. They're thinking about balloons. Yeah, no, I don't have anything else to add. We'll uh, leave it there, the Duran.locals.com. We are also on Rockfin. And go to the Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code GOODDAY. Take care.